Hello there everyone, how you doing today? I hope you're all well. Today we're going into r slash entitled people. If you enjoy, please like and subscribe and let's get started, okay? Entitled mom thinks I owe her 10k compensation because her son grew up to be a thug just like I said he would. Oh boy, it's gonna be one of these. Okay then. Apologies, but this one's long, as there is some context to get out of the way. Years ago, my cousin Lucy and I had a strained relationship, because she let her son, Damien, do anything he wanted, and never punished him and brushed away anything he ever did as boys will be boys, or he's just a kid, etc. It came out, came to a breaking point between us when Lucy and Damien were visiting years ago. Damien was 12 at the time, and my daughter, Maggie, was 9. Maggie was sitting happily playing her Xbox in her bedroom upstairs while Lucy and I were talking. Damien got bored and wandered off. A few minutes later, and I hear screaming and crying. I rush up to Maggie's room to find her. Her on the floor, blood all over her face, while Damien's just casually playing on the Xbox. It turns out he came up and demanded to turn on the Xbox. Maggie said, sure, just let me finish with this level. So he snatched away the controller from her and smashed her around the face with it, then shoved her out of the way. I know I was a demon child, but what the f what in the friggity froggers is this so far? Oh my god. I rushed her to the hospital. Luckily, it worse, looked worse than it was, and there was no lasting damage. And I live in the UK, so no medical bills. But I was furious. I told Lucy what Damien did, and she shrugged and said, You know how boys will be boys with that video games she should have just let him play i told her in no uncertain terms that she and her son were not allowed anywhere near me or my family we got into a huge fight over this where she of course tried to absolve her little angel of anything wrong and I lost it, and told her if she didn't discipline him and teach him boundaries, she would end up raising a monster who would grow up to be a thug or worse, which infuriated her. This caused fallout with the family for years, largely because Lucy lied and told everyone her son and Maggie had just been play fighting, and that's how she got hurt. It was just an accident, and I was overreacting. Oh boy. After a few years, everyone forgot. I still forbade Lucy or her hellspawn from coming anywhere near me. Several other family members did the same. I can't imagine why. Fast forward a little uh, before the pandemic. Damien was 19, and just like I predicted, he soon learned that thanks to his mother... He was bulletproof, as she would never believe he did anything wrong. So his behavior got worse and worse and worse, to the point where he was kicked out of every school in the area and had to go to special school. I got a call from Frank, Lucy's brother, telling me Lucy had been rushed to the hospital. That he knows we don't talk, but Lucy was seriously hurt, and he wants to let me know. Despite our history, I went to visit Lucy, accompanied by Frank and his wife. Before this, we had really been close, and I was upset to hear she was hurt. When I got there, I was shocked by what I saw. She was really banged up, her face swollen, bruises all up her arms. It turned out Damien had done this. She was really struggling for money, and he refused to get a job, so she finally tried to lay down the law and tell him to get a job or she was throwing him out, so he attacked her, almost dislocated her jaw. It was horrific. Now, we had a history, but at this point, none of that mattered. I was worried and sad for her. I immediately asked her if she needed help with anything. She seemed surprised, but we ended up all having a really heartwarming chat, with her saying how much it meant to her that we came to see her. I thought maybe we were turning a corner and could repair our relationship, 
we had been really close as kids. Oh, how wrong I was. A few weeks later, I started getting blasted on social media and getting nasty messages and texts telling me what an awful person I was and how could I do what I did to Lucy. I was confused. I hadn't done anything. I called Frank. He had no idea either, but he said he would look into it. Turns out Lucy had told everyone that I'd come to the hospital and mocked her, gloating, I told you so! While well, she bawled her eyes out, I confronted Lucy about it, asking how she could lie like that. She hit me back with, This was all your fault. It's what I deserved. If, if I knew this was going to happen, why didn't I do more to help her? She then demanded I pay at least 10k for the damages I caused. Like, what the? What the frog? She lied to everyone because she couldn't stand that I had been right and decided to punish me for it. For months, I endured hateful messages from family members who believed her lies. Not all my family believed her, of course, and Frank and his wife cleared things up about what really happened. He managed to record Lucy admitting that she lied, which got most of them off my back, but there were still a few relatives who had it in their heads that there's no smoke without fire, and I must have done something to make her say what she did. But they're all distant relatives on her side, so who really cares? Then the pandemic rolled around. Everyone forgot about the petty squabbles Lucy and her lies had caused. But last month, we held up family gathering at my parents in the first in years due to the pan- to the pan- Due to the pandemic. Englishing's hard, okay? Lucy showed up. Thankfully, Damien was absent on account of serving a prison sentence for aggravated assault and battery, unrelated to what he did to his mother. I went to ask Lucy how she was doing. The first words out of her mouth were, You need to pay me what you owe me. If you don't, I'm taking you to court. I need that money. It's the least you could do for ruining my life. She followed me around the party demanding I pay her, telling everyone who would listen that I had ruined her life. My, what a happy family reunion. Ah! Pain. I almost died at age five. Well, we're starting out strong here. English isn't my first language and I'm from Europe. My apologies for any mistakes. It was a long and warm summer. It had been too warm the past few days, which meant that five-year-old me had been doing activities in a stationary position all those days. The energy that I had built up could be best described as grenades slowly getting the pin removed. The summer days averaged 23 Celsius, or 73 for Americans. But this day it had been a cool 17 Celsius, 62 degrees Fahrenheit. It might not seem like a big difference, but the climate here makes the heat unbearable to most. The 17 Celsius expedited the pulling of the pin. Thud. Cob. Boom. I was clumsy, like most kids are, but I was very clumsy. I wore glasses, and because of a defect in my right eye, I saw everything double. On this fateful morning, grenade and all, I knocked over a glass of milk by accident. My mother, being exactly who she was, and still is, scolded me severely. I was told to go to my room and stay there all day for my carelessness. I felt that it was unfair for me to be grounded all day for a mistake I didn't mean to make. I became malicious and found a bouncy ball, throwing it hard as, as hard as I could against the floor, in hopes that it would reach the ceiling. It wasn't too long before my mother appeared with a face who could scare Hannibal the cannibal. Wheezing and yelling commenced. Do it one more time, and I'll throw all your toys away. Do it one more time, and you'll stay in your room till you move out. What do children do? Push boundaries. 
I threw it at my mother, hitting her kneecap, and caught it. God, it should be understood as randomly bouncing back into my hand. It didn't hit the floor or the ceiling, which made it compliant to her threats. Insert more wheezing and yelling. She grabbed the bouncy ball and told me it was no longer mine. I cried and pleaded with her to no avail. She left and I immediately followed her to regain my bouncy ball, only resulting in more or less being thrown into my room and a chair being placed under the door handle. I had been told to never, ever fiddle with the radiators, which was exactly what I did then. Piss on me, I piss on you. I turned the heat all the way up and then laid down sleeping under my plushy blanket. My mother must have thought she made me comply and didn't come to check on me for quite a while. My best guess, seven day hours. My dad came home from work and checked on me, finding me in this very warm and sweating like there was no tomorrow. He tried waking me, but I didn't really get to it. This prompted him to pack me up into the car and drive towards the ER. I had a fever of 107, and it was a challenge for them to draw blood because I was dehydrated. I got fluids and was gradually cooled down. According to my father, the staff made it clear they would call the equivalent to CPS here. My mother spun a tale of me playing too long in the garden, and my father, afraid of losing me, shut up. I don't know how, but they convinced the staff not to call. What kind of a parent doesn't even check on their four, five year old for hours? Bullies their kid into compliance with threats and theft, grounds their kid for a whole day over an innocent mistake at breakfast, leaves their kid with a woman like that, and doesn't ever let their kid act like a kid. I'm 27 today. I'm better, but the damage she did to me will forever leave a scar in my soul. Please don't ki get kids if you get them, because that's what people are supposed to do. The education, husband, wife, car, dog, house, children, career, and retirement. Life isn't the only way to live. Try borrowing a puppy for a couple days to see if you can handle being on all the time and forgive accidents and destruction easily. Children are like puppies on steroids for years on end. Neither should be packed away whenever you feel like getting a break, which is exactly what I suspect my mother did. She waited for anything that she could ground me for to have a quiet day to herself, which she could have had. She only called my retired grandparents and driven me to them 20 minutes away. They were glad to host any and all grandchildren at all times. Jesus fucking Christ. Christ! What a nightmare duo of parents! Ugh! Disgusting! My mother blames me for a crime my brother committed. Topic warning, suicide, self-harm, and abuse in every other sense of the word. Yes, even sexual. So I made a story about my mother not accepting my privacy. I recently turned 18 and just moved back to my country with my sister leaving my mother behind. For context on this story, moved with my mom, 57 female, and her husband, 47 male, and my brother Kyle, 20 male, when I was 14 turning 15. Kyle was 16 turning 17 at the time. During this time, he, and I hate to admit this, used my body for his own gratification. And yes, this is the way you're thinking of it. It started at age 12, and on every occasion, I've said no multiple times, but I'm your brother. You owe me because I help you. Took the better of me. Despite that, I was in no mental state to consent, and very much underaged. This all stopped in 2020, but he kept asking to see my body for inspiration, and even paid me for it. It stopped completely in March of 2021, but started up again as just asking to see or feel in September 2021. Anyway, in October of 2021, after a bad SH and unaliving scare, I told my father and he promptly called the police. 
I went into an institution of troubled teens where I was berated by my mother and another brother. I have five of them. That I was lying and that I was destroying the family. The family that, mind you, half of them went little to no contact with my mother. She tried to keep together. My other siblings described it as already broken. I actually learned while in these institutes I went to three of them that one other brother, the one that berated me, actually tried to do the same thing to me when I was a baby, say a few months to one. During my stay in the hospital into the second to last institute, I got a horrible, horrible infection and had to go to the hospital. Originally everyone thought that my appendix was bloating and about to explode. But it turns out it was an infection in my oviduct. They asked me if I had sex and if I was a possible STD. This caused me to panic and I told them about my situation and that I was not comfortable with them looking at my genitals. They accepted this and decided they'd check through my urine which proved to them it wasn't an STD. But for certainty I warned my mother and this was the conversation. Mom. Can we call? This is very important. I was brought to the emergency room. We did an echo and they said my appendix was fine. So are they doing other tests? I said I have no idea. Can I call? Sure. I don't remember the phone call, but I had to leave to get my results. About half an hour later, I continued. Me. Apparently everything's fine. Now I'm being sent to a gynecologist to get something else checked out. Maybe it was something to do with my period? Oh no, I'm about to cry. Okay, well let me know when you know. Doctors say it could be an STD. STD? <gasps> As if you didn't know what an STD was. Yup, and since they asked, I did tell them about the situation. Not who any specifics. Okay? Where did you get that from? This actually struck a nerve. She knows the only person who ever touched me was Kyle. I wrote back that they believe it could have been from that interaction. Even if the last one was two years ago. Nope, don't believe that. You will get a definite answer or just some maybes but could be's. I know it might seem far-fetched that it was there since my last interaction, but I trust doctors more than my anti-vax Karen mother. I was fine. We still don't know exactly what it was, but I will be tested properly to know if I had an STD or not. Fast forward about a few months and I'm about a week away of moving back with my sister. My mom bought me my stuff and as ready to, as she was ready to bid me goodbye. We were talking and making sure that she could take care of my dog because I can't take her with me. Then this conversation happened. I still hope we can keep contact. After all, you're still my mother. I hate this sentence because yes, she is my mother, but toxic is toxic, and I do not need that in my life. To be honest, with everything happening to me, I don't want anything to do with you or the family. You ruined my marriage. You planned. By hiding the fact he raped me? E EP, my stepdad. Rape was not what happened. You consented. I was underaged and am mentally unstable. I was in no place to consent. And even if I did, I said no beforehand multiple times. You ruined us. This is all your fault. And then I said, have a nice life. I start crying and run back inside. I could not control my anger. I split the skin on my hands by punching a few things. I mentioned I was unstable, right? I have, this is all possible, a therapist told me to get checked specifically for these. PTSD, anxiety, depression, in addition, a psychiatrist said I had signs of mild autism and ADD, which now translates to ADHD. At the time, they couldn't diagnose me because I was a child and all children behave this way. In addition, I have voices in my head. Not the typical kind. Think DID and that's basically it. I personally think that it's something else, but the therapist says otherwise. I mentioned I was unaliving 
or wanting to at least, as well, but my mother was having none of it. She believed that I was being corrupted because as a child, I cannot have ADHD, depression, or any of that stuff. The only reason I'd have autism would be because due to a vaccine I had against a specific type of cancer that my mother had and my sister had signs of it. According to my mother, ADHD was just me being lazy and not wanting to work. But I was done. I moved out and went no contact. I recently started up contact again though because, again, she's my mother and I should try to salvage anything we might have or have left. Also because of my dog. Personally, I would do it for the dog and the dog alone, honestly. Update. Called the mother and the conversation was actually rather tame. Stepfather, though, refused to talk to me and my mother ignored my question about my dog. Twice. She replied after three times, I asked, when I tried to ask when she'd want to call again. She hung up on me. I'm confused, but I hope my dog's okay. I'll ask for a photo of her at some point. What in the actual fuck are those parents on? I would say I want some of what they're having, but I'm not that desperate. Oh my god. I'm so sorry for you, OP. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. See you next time.